Good afternoon. It's Monday the 19th of January 2015, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host, Brian Gerrish, with me in the studio, Mike Robinson. Afternoon. And uh, behind the technical de desk, Nick Green. Uh, well, the weather in Plymouth is uh, blue sky, sunshine and pretty cold, uh, with a bit of frost and frozen rain overnight. Uh, reports coming into us around the country, generally the same blue sky, um, cold weather and creef in Scotland, I believe, dusting of snow. So north of the border, we finally got some reports in and uh, the Scots will need their uh, woolly underwear on under those kilts. Well, what better place to start, therefore, than Robert Green, um, the very brave anti-child abuse campaigner who has suffered imprisonment twice. Robert is due to appear in Aberdeen Court at 10 o'clock this coming Wednesday. Uh, the charge against him is breach of a non-harassment order. Robert uh, has recently uh, spent three months in prison and he's spent about one year under house arrest reporting to police uh, daily. Uh, we await to see what uh, justice is meted out by the Aberdeen Court on Wednesday. Anybody who can attend, please do. It's so important for the public to see justice being done. And of course, Robert has suffered so much in his journey to try and protect children, uh, not only in Scotland and not only Holly Gregg in particular, but also throughout the United Kingdom. And uh, we understand that uh, progress that has been made for a full investigation into child abuse in Scotland has received a boost from the campaigning efforts of Robert Green. Uh, well, we are now going to move on to really what is a news flash. Um, we have re been receiving very, very disturbing news about the brave child abuse survivor and whistleblower Melanie Shaw. Uh, this is the lady who first blew the whistle on um, child abuse in Beechwood Children's Home, Nottingham, and that very quickly resulted in at least 100 victims at that children's home alone uh, being known. Uh, however, since that time, Melanie has been uh, imprisoned in Peterborough Prison, uh, where she was bullied, put in solitary confinement, de denied medical, um, proper medical treatment, and uh, having been found guilty in a court in Nottingham on charges of negligent arson um, and criminal damage. Uh, she's now under a probation order, uh, but yesterday she was reporting to us in a very distressed state uh, that she had been picked up by Nottingham Police and taken to Queen's Hospital to a special mental assessment unit. Now, we will cover here the tweets that we put out yesterday. Let's have a look at those. Um, but uh, as events, I'm um, sorry, this was on Saturday initially uh, and it's continued over the weekend. So the main point is that uh, Melanie Shaw uh, contacted us to report that uh, basically she was being followed and harassed by Nottingham Police. And this had escalated after she'd made a complaint of rape to the police. Um, so my tweet here said that uh, we'd received a very distressed telephone call from Melanie Shaw uh, saying that she was uh, waiting for a psychiatric assessment in the Queen's unit, Nottingham. Uh, she was very frightened that they were working to section her. And of course, the aim of this, we believe, would be to silence her as a very vital um, child abuse whistleblower. So we followed up that initial report uh, by saying that uh, we, we then understood that uh, around 7 p.m., this is Saturday night, Melanie was dis discharged. Um, we were waiting confirmation from her. And we are making the point here that it's interesting. The state in the United Kingdom does not help child abuse victims. It victimizes them further. Uh, we established that Melanie was out. Um, she had been treated very badly. We understand she was strip searched again. And uh, in, our, in her reports to the UK column, Melanie consistently said that she was being subject subjected to harassment by Nottingham police, followed in cars, late night phone calls, and uh, she was extremely concerned for her safety. 
The comment we made was this sick government which abuses victims to protect abusers. It's up to all of us, all of the members of the public, to stop the criminal activity of David Cameron's Conservative government. And uh, we stand by those comments and uh, we're also standing by the reports that we've had from Melanie that she has suffered two weeks of constant harassment uh, by not only the police in the Nottingham area, but also the local authorities. If we sum it up, it's clear that the um, victims of um, child abuse in UK simply do not have a voice as far as the authorities are going. Mm. And of course, 300 people at a meeting in Westminster last week uh, in order to complain about um, uh, child abuse throughout UK and the fact that Theresa May has consistently failed to uh, get a full investigation underway. Uh, none of the mainstream uh, press or media reported those 300 people. Aside from the sheer horror of the fact that a British government would protect child abusers, uh, let's look at what Melanie was threatened with because the unit in Nottingham, like many others throughout the country, works on section 136. Here is the section 136 fact sheet. Uh, the police taking you to a place of safety from a public place. So it's sold as if, as if this is something uh, nice but here are all of the rules. A place of safety can be a hospital or a police station. The police can move you. Have a look at the detail on this uh, piece of paper, which is setting out how any of us could be picked up at any location, public location or private location by the police and simply put into a gulag of mental assessment. On a whim. On a whim. Yeah. Uh, the police have the power to remove you from a public place if they think you have a mental illness. They think. All they've got to do, Mike, as you've just pointed out, is think that you have a mental illness and you're in immediate need of care and control and they can deliver you into a psychiatric unit. And um, uh, this is a more detail here. You can be on this section for up to 72 hours until an approved mental health professional and or doctor sees you. And of course, ultimately, you can be sectioned. But what we picked up in this document is it refers you directly to a charity, rethink.org. So here we are. This is the charity given the power behind Section 136. And if you visit their website, uh, they're saying in very um, encouraging, slightly cuddly terms, well, trust Rethink. We're here to protect people with uh, mental illness. But in fact, Rethink, of course, are working very closely uh, with the police, it would appear, and in uh, Section 136 documentation. Um, it was very interesting that uh, um, on the radio this morning, um, they were talking about uh, mental health and so on, and they were saying that not enough money was being put into uh, mental health uh, care for children. Um, and uh, one of the people that was, I uh, can't remember the details of this now, but one of the people that was commenting on this was saying what a great job the government was doing and that the government deserved thanks and so on. Uh, and then used the words charity in the same sentence as government. And the implication absolutely was that uh, uh, government and charity is the same thing. And I just thought that was a fascinating little uh, suggestion through the BBC. A nudge. A nudge. I think that's yeah. a nudge. Yeah. We're talking about applied psychology here. Uh, let us come back just briefly for, before you continue, Mike, and say that Melanie Shaw, as a victim of unspeakable abuse, not only in her family life as a very small child, but then in the care of the state in children's home Beechwood, has received absolutely no proper uh, psychiatric or um, clinical psychology care from the state mm. in order to deal with her suffering as an abuse victim. And of course, this is the pattern across uh, Britain, no help at all from the victims. But when it comes to delaying and stalling a proper investigation into the crime of paedophilia, particularly by the establishment and politicians, uh, well, of course, unlimited time, money uh, and effort. That's why we need a grand jury. Indeed. Well, uh, Nick Clegg, uh, president of the Privy, um, is of course uh, in charge of mental health 
the business big push of ment for mental health in the lead up to the election. Uh, and he has released this little infographic today um, saying that one in four people in the UK, that's 25% of us, are going to become mental Ill, mentally ill this year, uh, according to that mental case. Um, so there you go, 25% um, of us. Uh, and today, though, he is focusing on suicide uh, and suicide. Um, well, he's saying here he's committed and indeed he should be. Uh, but he's saying he's committed to a new ambition for zero suicides across the NHS. And I'll just quote a little bit from this. It says, Nick is today, Monday the 19th of January, hosting a mental health conference with the Liberal Democrat Care and Support Minister Norman Lamb. The event brings together a leading doc doctors, policymakers and campaign groups to discuss the future of mental health services in England. The zero suicide ambition is about changing how people who are in NHS care are treated so they are not forgotten when they move on, when they move or leave the health service they have been in. Um, so in other words, what he's saying is, um, you know, when people leave, stop receiving the care that they really should be getting, then that increases suicide. And uh, well, that would seem like common sense. Would it's it interesting that none of the Lib Dems assisted at all in the South West Wales suicides. And when UK Column and other researchers were pushing information uh, into the government, into a number of MPs, pointing out the despicable information uh, being put out to uh, Welsh school children in plays and so-called help groups, uh, there was a wall of silence across all three parties. So uh, total hypocrisy, as we might expect from the Lib Dems under um, Privy, Privy, what is he? He's president Master of the Privy. Master of the Privy. Yeah. President uh, of the Privy, Clegg. Uh, so anyway, I'll just quote a little bit here. He said, suicide is and always has been a massive taboo in our society. People are genuinely scared to talk about it, never mind intervene. That's why I'm issuing a call to every part of the NHS to commit a new ambition to a new ambition for zero suicides, except it seems when a suicide is assisted, um, as uh, can be seen in this slide here. Um, so, uh, if the su suicide is, is assisted, then clearly the, uh, the, uh, there's tons of support as for as many as possible. possible. Yes, yeah. um, and uh, well, uh, although the House of Lords. Uh, um, has successfully held up the uh, assisted suicide bill probably until after the general election um, through their debate uh, at the end of last week and they basically asked uh, to table so many amendments to this that it can't proceed before the election. Um, it seems that that may only be a, a formality or at least that's how it's being presented. Um, the delay has to be good for anybody that's in opposition to it of course because it gives them more time to, to continue with that opposition. Um, so um, 150 amendments were tabled in the House of Lords on Friday uh, and uh, well they, although it has to be said many of those um, amendments were quite small things, I mean for well at least in terms of the, the uh, operational um, aspects of this but perhaps some of the language that used, that's used. Unfortunately uh, the, t the amendment that was tabled to change the wording of the bill from assisted dying to assisted suicide was defeated. Um, so that assisted dying, of course, uh, makes it seem a little more cuddly or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, Falconer, of course, is Lord Falconer, who's behind this bill, uh, is saying that although it's unlikely to become law before this, the end of this parliament, he's saying that really it's a done deal because uh, because peers, instead of debating whether or not it should become law, are really de debating the detail. The, the, the acceptance is there that it will become law, and they're debating the detail of it. Um, others are saying, well, actually, that's a bit uh, a bit premature to be suggesting that it's a done deal in that way. But but uh, it it probably is, unless unless you know something significant happens over the election period, and that is our opportunity to make opposition to this type of uh, this type of legislation uh, keenly felt. Yeah, something has to be done. Yeah. Well, we've just had a. Um a news uh, report in, and we understand that the situation around Melanie Shaw is particularly bad. It uh, would appear that uh, she had a particularly violent break-in, um, a door kicked in during the night. And uh, if the reports are correct, at the moment, there's some sort of standoff with individuals who appear to have broken into Melanie Shaw's home. And uh, Melanie is in a very, very distressed state. Uh, I'm going to make a live plea that if there are any people in the Nottingham area who feel that they could 
uh, give Melanie some uh, direct support. I think that is badly needed. But here we are on live um, uh, British media. And uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about the vicious victimization of child abuse whistleblowers. We are talking about child abuse victims who are denied uh, proper counseling and uh, psychiatric support from the state. And of course, police who are prepared to stand on the sideline um, failing to protect uh, very vulnerable people. Mm. So if anybody can help in the, in the Nottingham area, um, uh, Melanie needs your assistance uh, now. And what, does she contact us in order to get the details? Uh, if people t uh, would contact us, we will be able to uh, give them further information. And uh, we'll also provide updates on Twitter as the day continues. Well, um, this leads us uh, probably inappropriately or very nicely, depending on how you look at it, to the subject of Britain's royal family. And of course, the main media report today is that uh, Prince Andrew has now appointed a QC. Uh, he's going to fight the allegations uh, uh, from the uh, underage lady, uh, uh, as was in America. And um, uh, what we now know, of course, is he's going to get an extremely high profile QC. Um, Queen's Council, doesn't that mean you just select one of the councils that have pledged allegiance to your family in the first place? Mm. So we've got an interesting situation. And of course, uh, the papers are reporting that Andrew is now going to go to Davos. Uh, if we can just pop that one up again, Nick, please. Um, we'd like to say what unbelievable hypocrisy. Um, what he's, what uh, Prince Andrew is basically saying, don't judge my friends or their values because he has been mixing with somebody convicted of this type of offence. I'm here to represent all of the British public. So we should all feel delighted today to know that Prince Andrew, who's very happy to meet with the likes of Mr Epstein, um, is, is the man now going to represent us on the world stage, to which I think UK column says, not in our name. And uh, we've also had uh, this uh, report uh, brought to our attention. It's the Telegraph uh, talking about uh, child abuse in St Helena. And uh, what uh, a civil servant is saying is that despite all of the reports into central government, um, nothing was actually done. And uh, we put out a little while ago this little graphic, of course, pointing out David Cameron wanting to move on and child abuse and also pointing out his flawed judgment, uh, pictured top right, uh, common purpose. Uh, Pedophile somehow got close to David Cameron. Mm. Well, Reaper, that must be. Yeah, well, this is the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act. Perhaps it should be called the Deregulation of Investigatory Powers Act because, of course, uh, it, it, the, since the secondary legislation has basically expanded the scope of this, um, even the BBC has begun to, begun to use it according to the Belfast Telegraph here. Uh, and uh, they spoke to the BBC uh, and they, the BBC has confirmed the use of uh, RIPA in Northern Ireland uh, in order to try to track down people who are evading their television licence. So this is clearly not what this legislation was intended for. Uh, it was only intended as uh, allegedly uh, an anti-terrorist measure. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, to date, nobody has ever said that evasion of television licence, although it's still a criminal offence, I haven't heard anybody suggesting it's a terrorist offence. Until now. Until now. Agree. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, but moving on, a uh, very interesting blog uh, in the mail over the weekend from Peter Hitchens. And I suggest that everybody uh, goes and have, has a read of that because basically uh, what he's suggesting or what he's uh, pointing out here is that we have the Civil Contingencies Act, um, which could turn, the, uh, to turn Britain into a de facto dictatorship overnight. Uh, if, as he says, politicians can find an excuse to activate it. But he's highlighting the counter-terrorism and security bill, which is getting no coverage in the mainstream media at all, apart from this, as far as I can see, uh, slipping its way, as he says, quietly and quickly through Parliament. Uh, and, uh, the, well, really, this is uh, going to require people to, if they're holding a public meeting, for example, to, to uh, declare what the 
what the details of that are before they hold the meeting and so, so on. So the government does the core of its business through the Privy Council, which of course is a secret, uh, a secret as far as the public are concerned. So the government operates at a secret level, but it wants to know when when we're meeting, we the public are meeting. That, that's right. Now he just finishes off his uh, his piece with a, a very uh, interesting little statement. Uh, he says. Uh, but so, so far there's been nothing but a tiny mouse squeak of protest against this dangerous anti-British concrete headed twaddle. It will go through and in 10 years time we'll wonder why uh, we're locking people up for thinking. Uh, we'll ask how did this happen and he says this is how it happens. Well of course Peter Hitchens simply doesn't understand the gravity of the situation because the government is already locking people up in mental institutions because of what they think. Uh, if Peter Hitchens would like to make contact with the UK column, we'll talk to him about five cases about mothers being put in mental institutions, simply trying to protect their children from um, pe uh, paedophiles and uh, sexual abuse. Uh, but of course, what he's, what he's then saying that that's being extended to as a form of thought crime, um, which, you know, staggering, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not concrete, it's planned, it's calculated. Yeah. Well, where does this go? Uh, let's have a look at uh, reports around GCHQ over the weekend. Well, here's the famous donut and uh, the headline from the mail, watching them, watching us. First ever pictures from inside the, the heart of Britain's GCHQ spying station show intelligence agency uh, keeping eyes and ears on global communications. Yeah. And um, this is, uh, this is just amazing because what is this really about? David Cameron has apparently given personal approval for cameras to go inside uh, this organization. So here he is, uh, David R. King Cameron, pressing for, f for further attacks on free speech and liberty. And uh, this is the quote from the Mail article. The visit to the HQ was granted by David Cameron who is pushing to give agencies like GCHQ access to encrypted communication. Last night, the Prime Minister warned internet firms they must work with security agencies to stop their networks becoming a safe haven from terrorists. But let's have a look at the propaganda around this because uh, there was a little video produced which seems to have come from ITN. We are saying David Cameron, Conservative Government propaganda film of GCHQ. And this is one of the opening shots spying on the world and the British public from between the two pillars. Here's the massive entrance of this building. Uh, inside, we've got a logo clearly showing the GCHQ um, lettering encircling the globe. And then the real propaganda begins because here we've got something quite fascinating, carefully posed shot inside G GCHQ. Uh, with a poppy inside the eye of the doughnut. Uh, we think this is nudging. It's very we, emotive, isn't it? Yeah, we are looking after the veterans. We are looking after historic people. This is very, very dangerous uh, propaganda from David Cameron's Conservative government. And if anybody wants to go a bit deeper, we're going to say the occult meaning, of course, is a celebration of the blood of war and death in the eye of the donut. He has a bit of a cheek uh, criticizing other people, uh, alleging other people are running a death cult. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, in, in our opinion, Mike, I think we're agreed, aren't we? We know where the death cult is. It's based in Westminster. Let's continue through GCHQ. Well, um, uh, <clears throat> this was a very interesting little shot showing some of the screens. Apparently they all watch uh, screensavers all day. But what we noticed in the top of the uh, shot here is something very interesting uh, because we have a gigantic screen with Google Earth and there's a little Google uh, logo to the right. Uh, so we're just going to ask the question, is GCHQ now working in partnership with Google? Of course, um, Google in partnership with the Conservative government. And what about this one? Uh, well, what's interesting is this is starting to show us the scale of the organisation. Remember, GCHQ employs well over 5,000 people. It's been reported to UK Column that some of the young employees are known as the McKinsey specialists, and they're regarded as uh, young IT geeks 
who were fanatical in their spying work to the extent that they regard it as a sort of super computer game. So these are very, it would appear to us, dangerous people. And this is the incredible bit, of course, the political charity Common Purpose, which recruits future leaders to operate outside authority and hold secret meetings using Chatham House rules, has trained GCHQ staff in policy and organisational development, software engineering and senior operations departments. So we know that for a fact. We have a political charity, Common Purpose, training uh, members of staff within GCHQ. Here's the nudging, though. Um, well, nice people, nice young lady, uh, just like ordinary people working at this job. And you can trust GCHQ because lots of shots of little cuddly toys. We're a cuddly, caring organisation, and you can trust us. Well, of course, you can't because this is the reality. Uh, GCHQ desperate for American dollars and taking about £100 million from the US and NSA um, and reported quite accurately here in The Guardian um, that uh, the US were keen to get into GCHQ's information uh, because we've got such lax controls over um, um, people's freedom mm. and you can get in and spy on whoever you like. So there's GCHQ. Where could we go from that subject? Well, we're going to go straight on to this one because we've now got JP suspended uh, because uh, they dared to put a Christian view of cross, across that an adopted child needs a mum and dad, not gay parents. And uh, what was the result of that JP's judgment? Uh, well, basically censured, disciplined, and has got to um, attend um, diversity training. Now, this is quite remarkable because we've got Michael Nazir Ali, former Bishop of Rochester. Look at what he says. Why can't the voice of Christians be heard? It's come to this after 1500 years. Um, basically, Christianity is being pushed out of the land. And he says the Lord Chancellor and the Lord Chief Justice, by disciplining Richard Page JP, have declared war on evil residual notions of the faith having any place in our legal processes. And this is the key bit. This smacks to me of the re-education camps so beloved of total totalitarian Marxist states. Mm. Is this the way to promote liberty or is it freedom, or freedom of speech? And what is going on here? We are watching Marxism being drawn into Britain. And of course, it's coming directly from this man using his Alinsky Marxist big society agenda. Mm. More of it. So we've got a nurse sacked for praying for a Muslim. And uh, here's the young lady. Um, we're going to simply say yet another attack on Christianity. Um, it's, it's unfolding in front of us, isn't it? And uh, who's in control? Well, is it really David Cameron? Or does this excellent photograph from the mail really show us something that's going on? Uh, Mr. Junkers, uh, presumably giving David Cameron his instructions, we're not going to give in over immigration or flow of workers in the EU. And uh, the comment in the paper is the arch federalist, who is an advocate of even closer union within Europe, said he would reject any attempt to change the EU treaties in order for Britain to restrict free movement of people within the 28 member states. So is it a puppet show? No independent UK uh, politics. Uh, this is Boy Cameron simply receiving his instructions. Well, indeed, and one of those, uh, as is the case right across the European Union you know, at the moment, is uh, that no single government, so no opposition to this agenda. And of course, we've been saying for how many weeks now? Certainly a couple of months uh, that, that we expect to see a coalition government, uh, but not just a coalition of two, a coalition of the many. And uh, that appears to be have broken into the mainstream now because uh, other other commentators also now beginning to say that they cannot see any kind of clear winner at the next election, uh, and uh, and it's looking like it's going to be uh, at least a three-way coalition. Of course, if you've got a three-way coalition, uh, what you're actually looking at is the one-party state because you've no effective opposition to anything that the government is doing. 
No, and of course, if the government makes all of its decisions in secret through the Privy Council, uh, we are in a dictatorship, a single party state. It's interesting that they're calling, they're gonna, they're, the term that's being uh, coined for this is the Rainbow Coalition. Well, that, that would be appropriate. This is the transformation of UK into the golden age. This is Marxist communitarian politics. And this is the underlying theme across uh, all three of the main parties. Uh, interesting, it's taken the mainstream media so long to catch up with the predictions of the UK column. Right. Well, anyway, in the meantime, Cameron is electioneering and today he's saying basically any job will do, any old job will do, uh, because he's aiming for 100 percent employment. And perhaps that's it's no coincidence that uh, uh, Cameron is claiming to do what uh, communist regimes have always done. Uh, but anyway, 100% uh, employment, what he's saying is that for him, of course, that term uh, means that anyone who wants to get a job can get one, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what the terms of employment are and so on, uh, as long as they get any old job. Uh, his goal is full employment. Uh, it, currently, we have 72% employment, allegedly, and but he expects we'll overtake Germany who are on 74% employment. Uh, but this is an aspiration. It's not uh, anything concrete. It's just an aspiration. So I guess we don't need to worry about that. Uh, but he says that only two percent, uh, sorry, only two to four percent of new jobs are in zero hour contracts. And he says that uh, it that ninety five percent of the jobs are full time. Uh, this is in a speech he gave today. But of course, he didn't mention whether any how, what percentage of them are permanent and what percentage of them are temporary. Uh, and uh, but he said it is a myth that the economic recovery was only benefiting the South uh, or that most jobs were being taken by foreigners. So it's a myth that uh, the economic recovery was only benefiting the South, which is news to the think tank uh, Centre for Cities because they released a report today, their Outlook 2015 report, and here it is. And what that says is for every 12 new jobs created in cities and towns in the South, uh, only one is created in the north. So Cameron obviously uh, clearly unsure about the meaning of the word myth. Uh, so this is a bit of concrete uh, evidence here, which suggests that Cameron uh, isn't quite telling the truth there. Um, and, uh, however, and they're also pointing out that the cost of living is horrendous uh, in the south. And this sentiment really echoed on a, on a larger scale by Oxfam today. Um, who have produced this report, Wealth, Having It All and Wanting More. Uh, and this is really saying that the world's richest 1% uh, are going to own more, well, are going to have more wealth than the 99% uh, by next year. So this has been in the media quite a bit over the last uh, 12 to 18 months about how uh, the, uh, the, the, this, the great divide in, in wealth is occurring. It is accelerating and Oxfam really um, suggesting that it's accelerating to a point uh, which is pretty unprecedented and uh, well are people going to take it lying down that's the question I have well, in my mind. We hope not because um, uh, was it Mr Glover is, is saying where the country is going it's going to a dictatorship that's happening very very quickly as we see the massive surveillance we see the gulag of uh, brutal police activity and uh, the psychiatric units uh, what is needed is for people to become active in the right way, peacefully, of course. And we'll give you a reminder that there's going to be another attempt to take the home of uh, Tom and Sue Crawford, and that'll be this Friday. Friday yeah. um, so anybody who would uh, like to not just sit there sending emails, but to get out and show solidarity support for other people as they face the criminal activity of our courts and banks, um, make contact with the UK column and we'll give you further details. Well, well, we'll put that, we'll put this up as an event on the front page of the UK column website this afternoon. So you can get the details this afternoon on ukcolumn.org. Excellent. Uh, but there we are, good people. And of course, peaceful, polite. The aim is education of the police in particular. Their families are just as much at risk from a dictatorship as anybody else. Uh, so the aim is peaceful education of uh, public officials that you encounter. Uh, do we give Alex a mention? Yes, we do. Alex G, again, just another quick reminder, Thursday the 29th of January, if you want to attend his uh, launch for his book, uh, Mindful, then it's at Waterstones in Peterborough. Uh, but please email first launch at alexg.com because they'll have uh, drinks and nibbles there and they just want to make sure everybody's catered for. Uh, and of course, uh, don't forget that uh, 
the BCG UK Column Spring Conference is uh, on the 27th, uh, 28th of February, that should say, 1st of March. Uh, so, but obviously people uh, hopefully coming, arriving on the Friday evening. Uh, 20, 28th of uh, February, 1st of March, t park in Telford in Shropshire. It's uh, very close to Birmingham, just off the motorway, no problem to get there. There's uh, train links as well. Um, please make sure you come to that. And this is all about doing things in the lead up to the uh, election. So we need as many people as possible because they are the people to go and spread the word. And I'm delighted to say that uh, Ian Puddick has, a, has agreed to come as a speaker. And of course, there is a man who really knows what uh, uh, the tragedy of, tragedy of the uh, British police is at the moment mm. and how vicious uh, the British state can be. Uh, if you get too close to the truth. So we do need your attendance at that event, as many people as possible. Um, I think we can take about 400, is yes. that right, Mike? Um, there we are. And uh, we'll provide further updates on Melanie Shaw throughout the day. Emails, phone calls, tweets, giving her support and asking why Nottingham authorities are not protecting and nurturing this very brave woman, uh, as many communications as possible, please. And we'll end on a note and say if um, this um, uh, internet broadcast is visible on one of those enormous TV screens inside G GCHQ, we'd like to say to all of you, I hope you have a very good afternoon at your desks. Don't spend too much time playing with your cuddly teddy bears. Uh, but if you'd like to know more details about the UK column, instead of spying, why don't you just ring us up and indeed uh, give us an interview? Thanks very much. We'll bye be bye. back same time tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.